Here are the seven types of players in D&D. The superhero. Everyone has at some point been this type of player. You, me, your mum, your pet dog, your mum's lover. If you play D&D, you've been a superhero. D&D is a game and the superhero looks at that fantasy premise and says, if this really is a game where I can be anything, then I'm gonna be a freaking badass. Superheroes want their characters to be cool, smart, funny, and deal massive damage. They want to look like Chris Hemsworth while having all the money, fame, wit, and charm as Chris Hemsworth. They see little value in character flaws. I mean, after all, why have a flaw at all? Real life is full of problems. D&D is a game and superhero players are gonna Mary Sue the hell out of it. Superheroes tend to enjoy combat, as shoving an ancient red dragon's head between its scaly buttocks is a straightforward and fun way to be extremely cool. They're often drawn to classes that can go Nova for incredible bursts of power. Sorcerers, paladins, and fighters are typical superhero choices. Most new players and younger players tend to be superheroes, but that isn't a criticism. In fact, superheroes are wonderful players to have at the table. Optimistic, fun-loving, and often making stupid decisions, a party of superheroes is basically always gonna have a great time. The thing about superheroes, though, is that thrill usually doesn't last forever. The One Punch Man syndrome kicks in, and players might start looking for a career beyond a freelance kobold spine remover. Could there be more to D&D than just winning all the time? As it happens, yes. And although most players will always have a bit of the superhero in them, in time they can start looking at their characters with a little more nuance. This could lead them to becoming the actor. Actors, unlike superheroes, aren't interested in their character being good at everything or even anything. Instead, the actor relishes the opportunity to perform. An argument with the town mayor, seducing the city guard, making a deal with an ancient blue dragon. These are the challenges the actor loves. You can take the dragons and even the dungeons out of D&D. The actor is here for the role play. They make for very fun players to watch. All the core cast of Critical Role are actors, both literally and in player archetype. The actor also enjoys failure and success in equal measure. Unlike superheroes who view low dice rolls as the enemy, actors are just as happy with a nat 1 as a nat 20, as they both give a fresh narrative hook to jump off. The actor may not be very combat focused at all. In fact, they may even make bad combat decisions when taking into account their character. However, don't let that fool you. The actor knows exactly what they're doing with their build. They often actively seek spells or abilities that enhance their social experience or fit their vision for their character. But that brings us on to another type of character, one that is similar in some ways, but in other ways, completely different. Let's talk about the storyteller. The storyteller shares the actor's deep familiarity with their character. They have a long backstory. They know exactly what their character wants, fears, and hates, and they're here to see that story through to the end. This is where storytellers and actors split. Actors live for the moment. They're eager to interact with Boblin the Goblin, the new NPC, because it gives them the chance to play their character. But as soon as the actor finishes talking, they couldn't give a shit whether Boblin the Goblin lives or dies. That moment is over. By the same token, as soon as an actor gets bored with the character they're playing, they're more than happy to fling themselves off a bridge and move on to the next character that excites them. Storytellers, by contrast, are more invested in the long term. They want to know everything about Boblin the Goblin, his homeland, his backstory, his favorite food, and his sexual preferences, and they'll write it down and remember it too. This can make them a little terrifying to a fresh DM, who isn't used to pulling a full NPC character history and list of preferred pronouns out of thin air. The storyteller will actually remember the names of towns and NPCs, and pay attention to the wider narrative the DM is constructing. They are the first to spot patterns, hints, and overarching mysteries taking place across an adventure. However, Above all else, the storyteller is about their character's story. It's not uncommon to find a storyteller who's played the same character for 10 years, is sick to the death of them, but can't move on because they need to end that story in a satisfying way. They are addicted to resolution. They need to get their character to a happy ending, or at least a satisfying one. Although storytellers challenge a DM with constant questions and take notes so zealously it borders on passive-aggressive, they are always close to the DM's heart. But the next type of player is one that, at least according to internet memes, is the one that challenges DMs the most. People, we finally need to talk about min-maxers. Before you stand three portals, 
each leading to a different environmental biome. I choose to go through the planes portal. What do I see? Wait, isn't this the Elements song? The Elements of Inspiration song? Yes. The Elements of Inspiration? When you're GMing out there running Pathfinder or D&D When trolls and goblins, rocks and dragons are stealing your RPG When players push for story like the baying hounds of Avernus But you've run low on prepared expositions spewing travel. But fret not, don't you know the answer? simple and so elegant Just pull a single card right from the inspiration elements To give you some fresh inspo to take your adventure anywhere Now watch me pull a full session with no prep out of the thin air Wait, wait, you're claiming with one card from that deck you can build an entire setting, encounter, and quest. I simply read the prompt word at the apex of the card I drew. It's battlefield, now I help awful prompt to put a story to. Turns out it's haunted by the ghosts who got the loot right at the feet, and like that, the encounter, treasure, and session preps all complete. Wow, that is really cool. But actually, I think I want to go through the desert biome instead, if that's okay. Fine. Here we go again. Grab the Elements of Inspiration cards to bring your RPG world to life by clicking the link below. With 9 decks and 420 cards, NICE! You can grab a deck, save hours of prep time, and elevate your game to the next level. The Minmaxer if your only experience of D&D is Reddit threads, then you'd be forgiven for thinking that min-maxers are tied for first place as the worst people in the world, alongside Hitler and people who spend $50,000 to set half of California on fire with their baby's gender reveal. However, memes aside, to me, a min-maxer is simply anyone who has a good time by analyzing any given situation and making what they feel to be the most optimal move. D&D is a game built upon a mathematical foundation. The Minmaxer gets a kick out of understanding that foundation and using the knowledge to be the best that they can be. This can be in the moment, in a tactical sense in a fight, or it can be in the character creation process. They analyze the mathematical value of spells and weapons, understand the importance of action economy and bounded accuracy, and make their decisions accordingly. This might sound a bit like the superhero, but that really isn't the case. The superhero thinks haste is the best spell in the game. The Minmaxer will never take haste. The Minmaxer enjoys campaigns with a high difficulty. Campaigns where there's a 98% chance of getting your muscular buttocks splattered across eight tiles of dungeon wall means that optimal play is rewarded. Minmaxers love a real challenge because they know they have the tools and the knowledge to handle it. But as much as the Minmaxer wants to plumb the depths of D&D in pursuit of perfect play, they pale in comparison to the knowledge that is coveted by the next type of player. The Scientist. Scientists and min-maxers are definitely close in some regards. Scientists aren't motivated by playing optimally. Instead, they seek to explore the very core of Dungeons & Dragons to find out what can happen. Scientists crave opportunities to get creative. They love finding uses for bad spells or underrated subclasses and abilities. The min-maxer looks at flesh to stone and sees a garbage spell. The scientist looks at flesh to stone and sees a way to fossilize a player, cast stone shape, give them an extra pair of arms, cast dispel magic, and make general grievous in D&D. They seek out obscure spell combos. They don't need to be powerful or even useful. The scientist just wants to explore. Bards, wizards, warlocks, and artificers are the scientists' best friends because they're the classes that give them most room to investigate. Good scientists know that the best way to explore is with the DM. They share their plans in advance, talk through things with the group, and work together. The best science, like the best D&D, is collaborative. Scientists are also excitable, always pushing for the next level or the next magic item to give them something new to play with. However, these traits really belong to the domain of the instigator, aka the Leroy Jenkins. The Leroy Jenkins cannot sit still. D&D is an action game. Let's get stuff done. Worrying about the best course of action is boring. Let's batter down the door, stick our heads through, and see how many of us survive. The instigator is excited when they play D&D. They love the game. They want to play as much as possible. Be it a plot hook or a dragon's tail, the instigator is going to grab hold and give it a solid tug because they know something is going to happen. They are the most likely player archetype to turn into murder hobos, but that doesn't mean that they're bad people or bad players. It just means that if they feel nothing is happening, they will make something happen. And if that means kicking an arch lich in the bollocks, that's the price that needs to be paid. As a DM, I love instigators. Too often, players are afraid of failure. 
The instigator is untroubled by piddling trifles such as staying alive. This means the story keeps going and never gets dull. Of course, sometimes games do slow down, character moments can be just as exciting as big boss battles, and the instigator understands this. They're not out to ruin other players' fun or dominate the situation, but oh boy do they keep things chugging along nicely. But there is one final type of player who doesn't really mind if a game goes fast or slow, a type of player who's very close to my heart. The Socialite. The Socialite is the player who is at the table to be at the table with friends. D&D is a game, but to the Socialite, that game could equally be Monopoly or Ludo or Twister. Dungeons and Dragons is simply something to talk about and something to do with your hands while you kick back, chat with friends and family, and order pizza on a Thursday evening. They may go very long periods without talking in-game. They may never talk in character. They may not take notes or really worry about what's going on. They forget things, make mistakes, and laugh a lot. They're playing D&D for the social experience. The affairs of kings, queens, dragons, and maidens hold little interest to them. But just because they don't interact as much with the game doesn't mean they aren't happy or interested. They're just vibing in the room playing when it's their turn and enjoying the atmosphere. The socialite loves the actor, is impressed with the min-maxer and cheers on the superhero. They seek not the spotlights nor the spoils, only to enjoy the rambling adventure of a group of friends through the Forgotten Realms. This is their free time, and they've made the excellent choice to spend it in the company of people that they like. You might have noticed that I haven't spoken about any bad types of players today, and that's because I don't really feel like a bad type of player exists, but I know that's a hot take and I'll save it for another video. Remember to check out the Patreon to get dozens of maps, adventures, and join in games that I run for the entire awesome community. Also, remember to like and subscribe and check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.